To make an ester such as pentyl propanoate, I can use an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. Just off the name, it means that I need to use pentanoanol and propanoic acid. Notice that pentanoanol and propanoic acid are both colorless liquids, and that when I add these two to the flask, it doesn't look like anything's happening. I'm also going to add just a small amount of concentrated sulfuric acid. The whole point of adding concentrated sulfuric acid is to just drive the reaction forward so that I produce more ester product. I increase my yield by doing that. And it does that because on the product side, it does produce water and I do add concentrated sulfuric acid to help remove the water so it pushes the equilibrium forwards. Now, to make this reaction go even faster, I'm gonna apply heat to the bottom. And usually uh, when you guys have done practicals uh, in high school, you probably would have used a Bunsen burner to do that. The problem with using a Bunsen burner flame is that it can get really, really, really hot, which is not what I want. I want a gentle heat towards the bottom. And I also want to make sure that that heat is evenly distributed along the bottom of that round flask. So I'm gonna use a sand bath to do that. We're gonna bury this flask into a sand bath and then we're gonna apply heat from the bottom of the sand bath just to help make sure it's all nice and evenly distributed. We're not gonna let this deceive us in the sense that the sand makes us think it's cold. It's actually still really, really, really hot. Now the problem with applying heat to the bottom of the flask is that in all of these reactions we do, we risk evaporating off some of our reactants and any of the products that we form. So we somehow need to recondense all of the vapors which are going to escape. And to do that, we're gonna use a condenser tube. And this condenser tube does exactly what the name says. It's gonna recondense things. So in this case, it's gonna be the vapors that try to escape through the flask. And how does this work? On the outside of the condenser tube is a second layer of glass. And in the bottom, we pump in cold water, uh, which then circles around the tube on the inside and then escapes from the top. And this helps keep the whole top part of that flask cold, which means that any hot vapors which try to escape can recondense back into the flask um, to either complete the reaction or just remain in the flask in the form of the product that we want, in this case, an ester. That's one of the disadvantages of this reaction is that you do need some specialty equipment to uh, collect your ester in the end. The other disadvantage of this reaction is that it's also quite slow. Notice that even though I've had all my reactants and products in my flask, it's still a, still a mixture as if like nothing had actually happened. It just looks like water to me. Over on this side on top of the hot plate is the actual flask, which I've actually had running for about an hour to almost two hours now with some gentle heat from the bottom. And you can see that there is a clear color change. So this reaction is pretty much done. So I'm going to switch that off and we're going to now collect the stuff in the flask which I assume will be a mixture of our ester product and also the initial reactants which may or may not have been reacted yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Now when I've got that you can see that my flask is a brownish color.